Welcome to the focus series. I am Dr. Gopal Krishan Jalwal, Assistant Professor in Anesthesia Department. Today I will show you how to perform the lung ultrasonography. Lung ultrasound is very powerful diagnostic tool, especially in the patient with uh, dyspnea or ventilation difficulty. Because of its uh, bedside availability, it is very helpful for the clinician to make the diagnosis and uh, you can also monitor the response to any clinical interventions and uh, it is particularly very sensitive and specific tool for diagnosis of uh, uh, pleural fusion pneumothorax and interstitial syndrome. standard point of care lung examination involves the assessment of three specific ultrasound positions for the each lung. Uh, under the blue pro protocol, blue stands for the bedside lung ultrasound in emergency. So what are these three specific uh, points? So the first blue point is uh, just below the clavicle into mid clavicular line. Here, the second intercostal space okay and the second blue point is located on the anterolateral chest wall just later to the nipple in a fourth intercostal space between the anterior and mid axillary line and the third blue point that is also known as a plaps point plaps stands uh, stands for the posterior or lateral alveolar or the pleural syndrome the plaps point is just perpendicular to the second blue point in the posterior axillary line here yeah. so the second option is that you can divide the lung into the seven zones for the scanning purpose uh, for that uh, you have to draw uh, three lines two vertical lines and one horizontal line so first line you have to draw into the anterior axillary line and second into the posterior axillary line and one horizontal line at the level of the nipple. So this area represents the 1L and this is a 2L and this is a 3L and this is a 4L. L uh, is for the left side. The same scanning zone can be divided onto the right side 1R, 2R, 3R and 4R. And on the back side of the patient, the scanning area can be divided into the three zones. So this is a scapula and this area is 5L and this is 6L and this is a 7L. In the lung ultrasound, we use both type of the probe, linear and curvilinear probe. But if you are looking for the pleural pathology such as pneumothorax, then uh, you have to do scanning with the high frequency linear probe. If you place the high frequency linear probe in second intercostal space then uh, you will see uh, this sono anatomy this is a normal lung sono anatomy this, this is a skin subcutaneous tissue here superior rib and inferior rib the bony structure always gives a acoustic shadow in the ultrasonography. Here you can see the acoustic shadow of the ribs. And in between the ribs, these are the intercostal muscles. And uh, just below the intercostal muscles, here you can see a hyperechoic continuous line that is the pleura. In the normal lung ultrasonography, parietal and visceral pleura, are not visible we cannot differentiate the parietal and visceral pleura but they slide against the each other in synchrony with the respiration this is also known as a sliding sign shimmering or and line 
If sliding sign is present, then we can rule out the pneumothorax. And uh, if we outline the ribs and uh, pleura like this, then it gives the appearance of bat. So this is also known as a bat wing sign or bat sign. Uh, the importance of bat wing sign is that if we place the high frequency linear probe in a second intercostal space sometime, you can not visualize the both ribs and uh, pleura completely. So if uh, you are uh, seeing the bat wing sign then it means uh, you are at proper place and uh, that is better to evaluation of the pleura and uh, just below the pleura there are few parallel lines these lines so these lines are the a lines these a lines are because of the air reverberation artifact Lung pulse is a pleural movement in synchrony with the cardiac contraction while patient is not ventilating. The presence of lung pulse rule out the pneumothorax. As I told you that uh, for the diagnosis of pleural pathology such as uh, pneumothorax we use the linear high frequency probe but for the diagnosis of uh, pleural effusion or for the assessment of the diaphragm movement we uh, need the curvilinear uh, low frequency probe and uh, the orientation marker should be kept on the cranial side place the low frequency curvilinear probe in a posterior axillary line in the 7th or 8th intercostal space and you will get this view when you place your low frequency curvilinear probe in 7th 8th intercostal space in posterior axillary line then first structure that you have to identify is the kidney uh, on ultrasound kidney is a bean shaped structure here you, you can see and we know that kidney has two parts outer is the cortex and inner is the medulla on ultrasound cortex is a anechoic or slightly hypoechoic here you can see this is a cortex and medulla is a, uh, slightly hyperechoic structure uh, here this is a medulla so once you identify the kidney then you have to move your probe upward uh, to visualize the liver if uh, liver is not visible in that plane so liver looks like a slice of bread and gives a homogeneous appearance uh, so this is a liver and few blood vessels such as a petechial vein, portal vein, or their tributaries can be visualized into the liver. And just above the liver, this is a diaphragm. So, for the pleural effusion, uh, you can look just above the diaphragm uh, here. And uh, here you can see uh, a interrupted hyperechoic line is spine. When you place low frequency curvilinear probe in the left side in posterior axillary line in 5th or 6th intercostal space, 
then you will see this sono anatomy as we see on the right side here also our first structure that we have to identify is the kidney as uh, i explained the kidney already in the right side of the view so here this is a bean shaped structure that is the kidney and this is a cortex and this is a medulla so just above the kidney you can see a homogeneous structure that is slightly hypoechoic when we compare to the liver uh, that is the spleen okay and just above the spleen you can see another a hypoechoic structure that is the diaphragm so here also if you want to look for the pleural fusion you have to look here on this side and uh, this is a another hyperechoic line uh, that is spine so when you move your probe in a upward direction from the liver you will see this view here you can see lung is pushing down the uh, diaphragm in synchrony with the respiration and resembling the curtain that's why it called uh, a curtain sign and if curtain sign is present then uh, we can rule out the pleural effusion and just below the diaphragm you can see the liver and few blood vessels inside the liver and when you move your probe downward you can see the kidney So how can you do the quantitative assessment of the pleural effusion? Uh, pleural effusion is a fluid collection between the parietal and visceral pleura. So for the quantitative assessment, first we have to calculate the distance between the two pleura as uh, uh, you can see in this picture. If this distance is 1 cm, then uh, fluid volume is around 100 to 200 ml and if it is a 5 cm then it is a cons considered that fluid volume is around 500 to 1000 ml.
what are the b lines uh, b lines are laser or torch like vertical hyperechoic lines they arise from the plural line and extend uh, till the bottom of the screen and they moves in synchrony with the respiration and here in this slide you can see the b lines b lines are not always pathological uh, two or three b lines can be visible uh, in a healthy patient but if you see more than three b lines in any area then uh, it indicates some pathology so you have to suspect for the cardiogenic pulmonary edema non cardiogenic pulmonary edema or interstitial lung disease pneumonia ards or lung contusion